Welcome to Switch Corner, my name is Alex and today we're taking a look at a performance review for Metroid Prime Remastered on the Nintendo Switch. With a surprise dropping during the Nintendo Switch Direct, I'm sure now many are wondering about how it runs, the gameplay, how it looks, and what do we get from a controlled perspective, namely, how is gyro implemented? Well that is what I'm here to find out, so let's get started. If you enjoyed the video today consider subscribing helps a huge amount and we have reviews and deals here on the channel daily. The story packed into this entry then is only the beginning, this is the first in what would become a trilogy. In the opening moments of gameplay it's quick to get things going, we've intercepted a distress signal from a ship and gone to investigate. Now on arriving we see that the crew all but gone and this vessel it is overrun with parasites that we must take on. Now we quickly uncover after some exploration that they were experimenting on creatures and they've developed an oversized and genetically modified monster known as the Parasite Queen and that makes for our first boss encounter of the experience. Things though go from bad to worse when our fight leads to the Parasite Queen falling into the ship's generator and that begins a countdown to the destruction of this location. Our role of course here, escape and as quickly as possible. This is really where the mission ahead reveals itself, we get outside and we do encounter Ridley. Now we follow them to the planet below but we are in bad shape, we've lost track of the target and we've lost access to many of our abilities. It really is a fantastic story this one and I do hope we get to see the second and third entry to follow this up and complete this story. Gameplay then, and for the few that may not know, this was a first person spin on the Metroid formula. It was a big deal back in the day, including myself honestly as well, it is for many considered a masterpiece. Now I'm only briefly touching on gameplay here today as an overview, but we do get control of our core functions pretty much immediately out of the gate before they are stripped away. That is, we can fire, we have a secondary option as well of a charged shot, we have rockets, we have a Pfizer, which kind of acts as our scanner but it's also essential for near everything from collectibles to interacting with many of the objects in this world. Alongside this then we can jump, we can dodge if locked on, we can morph ball of course and we can grapple. It's a really fun selection of gadgets that the game teases you with before stripping them away. Now while combat naturally is part of the experience here as well, I would say just be aware it's as much about the first person 3D platforming general exploration and the puzzles. There's some really unique moments in here as well where you'll be expected to use all of your skills to advance. Like any Metroid then it's designed to really challenge you in requiring certain abilities to get that game moving forward. Now I am a massive fan of this entry, I think for many as well this will be at the top of their Metroid list alongside classics such as Super Metroid. My only wish here is that they had maybe taken an extra step and included some sort of multiplayer like we saw from the sequel of this back in the day, I think it would have been a fantastic addition. I will have a full review of this one on the channel as well, so I'm going to be leaving it there, but I'll link that in the pinned comment once it is live. Controls and Metroid Prime are remastered as went all out on the options in here with four core control schemes that can then be tweaked as you please. These are going to be known as Dual Stick, Pointer, Hybrid and Classic. To put it out there, my favourite personally is the Dual Stick setting, the left stick controls movement, the right camera, but it is set initially to gyro off. You can jump into the options and turn it on for aiming only, and that in my opinion will be the best option for many. Pointer, Hybrid and Classic, they all put a different spin on controls but they all have a setting I'm not a big fan of and that is they remove the use of the right stick for the camera. I think that is a modern day addition that is absolutely necessary. Classic has no gyro as well at all. Pointer and Hybrid are these options. They ask you to make full turns with the gyro and it's just not for me at least what I want from the game. I want it to be specifically for the aiming. It's just if anything a little bit too much. I'm personally going to be sticking to dual stick and I'll no doubt switch in and out of then using a gyro. You can also then on top of this invert the axis, swap inputs and you can adjust the sensitivity which is going to be essential here as everyone has their own preferred speed when it comes to first person gameplay and of course a gyro. 
When it comes to additional options as well, we get a HUD opacity slider. We can turn helmet visibility on and off. We can turn off the HUD lag, which is the animation for our movement. And we can then turn unlock alerts on and off. We also get color assist options for red, green, and blue. Graphically then, I've always liked the look of this game, but it has never looked this good. It is absolutely stunning and sure, like it is showing its age in areas. Some of the textures, even in this remaster, can fall a little flat and the environments themselves, they can be quite a bit smaller than you may be used to from modern day releases. But few games can claim to be so well designed around our lead skill set from small corridors demanding the morph ball to areas that demand we use our brain power to overcome them. The move to 3D never compromised what was the heart of Metroid, perhaps one of the biggest compliments I can give the experience. This remaster though is looking real crisp, animations still pack a ton of charm as well, the game's quick to change up environments and the special effects for your weapons are particularly impressive. There's also a few explosions open in the game where it really kind of gives you those wow moments. You can't really damage the environment or anything else around you given the game's age but I do still find myself sitting here asking if they maybe added in a few extra visual effects because it feels a lot more alive than it may be used to on the GameCube. This was always though a one-to-one -one rebuild so it was never about changing things up so I'm probably going to say I'm wrong there but rather it's about giving us the best possible build of the game and I think we can say this far at least an hour or so into the game they definitely achieved that visually. Also the cutscenes look absolutely incredible, in fact this game it's just never looked at this good before. Audio then, and I must touch on this because it's an incredible soundtrack, and the design in general in fact is incredible as well, honestly. Weapons sound great though, the location effects are minimal but reinforce the drama. I love the explosive opening for example, and then the bosses, they sound suitably threatening. The music though, orchestral, it packs choirs, it's a personal favourite, especially if you're looking at this series in particular. Few games have such a good handle on the adventure, and it can be often exciting yet able to reinforce the alien-like nature of each location. I'm hoping this leads to some sort of physical final release so I'd love to add this to the collection. There's also in the options narration options as well, it's preset to off but this was a feature originally added for the European and Japanese releases so you can head into the menus and select partial or full. Frame rate and I'm happy to say that this one is locked out at 60 frames per second. Now granted I am only an hour into the experience so this could change. I will update it with my full review but this far it is looking incredible. Everything about the game seems to be performing exactly as you would expect and that's really important you know with the game's reliance on first person and for those that want to use a gyro 60 frames per second locked was the best possible outcome so I'm really happy to report that. With some more frame rate footage today you can watch out though for my full review again coming in the next day or so and with that hit subscribe and join us here for reviews and deals daily and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.